All right. So I've been on this Don Lemon rant for a while, and um, I really don't like him. Like, I just like really, I've just learned to tell not us how like you really him. feel, Andre. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what happened where, like, and here's the thing: like, I wasn't really, uh, we didn't start really watching CNN a lot until the pandemic because I think they had the best coverage. Um, we'd pretty much listen to it or watch it throughout the day. Started watching uh, his uh, evening show, and I didn't agree with everything he said, and. Uh, or how he presented questions. And I, I think he's got a little bit of bias. But um, this week, this week, Don Lemon just can't help him, can't help himself. So uh, yeah, can you roll that clip? Roll that yeah. beautiful <clears throat> bean footage. All right. He gets a lot of leeway with the comedian thing, though. So, Stuart, question why some veterans are facing food insecurity despite the Defense Department's So, math. yo, I'm literally, I, I watched that live. And I was like, yo, what did he just say? Like, did he really just say that? And I, I, but not even 20 minutes later, I sent you a text. I'm like, yo, this guy's bugging out, yo. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and like, uh, we well, didn't hear it there, but in the other, the, the longer clip that I had watched uh, a few days ago, he then, like, immediately after this, proceeded to say something to the effect of, he's so much more than a comedian. Like, is he done? How do you really feel? <laughs> Audie Cornish, uh, who was at NPR or PBS, I, I can't remember. She was on a while ago giving her, her feelings about um, Dave Chappelle. And she literally said something similar. He's just a comedian, right? Yeah. I think what bothers me about journalists or media personalities is that they believe that they're better than everybody else. Like, I really believe that. Uh, I have literally no respect for most talking heads on TV. I think they're just buffoons. and They're, they're not they're... even really journalists at this right. point, right? Like, I think we've talked about that before in the um... – the episodes where we were talking about infotainment, right? And the death of news. And it's really like they're TV personalities more than anything, which puts them on the same level as Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're not wrong there. I think it's, I think it's, it's absurd to think that, uh, and, I, and I don't have, I don't know Don Lemon as a person. But right. I can say his professional persona is irritating. So CNN, I hope you're listening. Like he's the worst. I think he would do better with a show by himself. He's not, doesn't seem to be a good team player with his morning team. And he says absurd things in the morning. And it's just really off-putting. He's always trying to interject himself into things. And it just, I, I'm just, I just get annoyed every time he does something like this. I just get more and more annoyed. Well, and it's funny because you were talking earlier about like, you know, you started kind of getting into not like Don Lemon, but watching CNN and watching his night, you know, his evening show and stuff like that. And we would always laugh at the interactions between him and Chris Cuomo when they would do the handoff from one to the other, <laughs> because it was... It was funny. It was entertaining. Like they seem to have a good rapport and a good relationship, at least in that regard. And obviously Chris Cuomo is no longer on CNN. And now it honestly feels like ever since then, and I, I'm sure that Don Lemon had his own issues prior to that as well, but I just, sure. I've never been a big, like, you know, news watcher, uh, especially cable news stuff i just like i try to at this point if it's not local news i try to just stay away from it um and we, we've talked about that where it's just like on, honestly at the national level this stuff has so little direct impact on my day-to-day -day life you know that i try to just like, all right what are the things that might actually you know like where is the accident on the road that I need to be aware <laughs> right. of, right? Like, what's the weather going to be like? What's going on this weekend in town? So I might find something to do. Um, so Don Lemon's not been, like, hugely on my radar. But, I mean, we had the thing, uh, you know, when him and uh, Chris Cuomo were doing their podcast. And we're like, oh, oh, you think that you can come after the Chris and Andre show and do your own podcast? 
<laughs> no, sir. No, sir. I don't, like we had a letter that we wrote to them and published. They, did, they mean, didn't. They didn't respond. Never responded. Uh, <laughs> they were. They were scared. Understandably so. But yeah, um, this is what like the. I mean, twelfth, fifteenth. 532nd time that he's like stepped in it, put his Gosh. foot in his own mouth. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, uh, you know, I, I have a disdain for some people that try to like, whether it's a conservative or a liberal or right or left, however you want to classify them. I get kind of irritated when they try to be the mouthpiece for black people. Um, there is a point and there's a, we have another video just of him, Don Lemon deciding that he's, he's the person that speaks for black America. And my wife first showed this to me and I was pissed. Yeah. I was like, what are we talking about here? This guy's a clown. Let's roll that clip. All right, real quick. No talking point is the name of his show. And he proceeds to just rattle off a bunch of fucking <laughs> talking points. Sorry. <laughs> Please, black folk, pay attention to and think about what has been presented in recent history as acceptable behavior. Pay close attention to the hip hop and rap culture that many of you embrace, a culture that glorifies thug and reprehensible behavior. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about black on black violence. The outrage that I have is in the lack of really the national attention to what is an epidemic of crime in the black community committed largely by blacks. Why aren't we talking about it? Good question. So listen to this. The reason there is so much violence and chaos in the black precincts is the disintegration of the African-American family. Talking he's point got a number point. one. In fact, yeah, talking he's point. got more than a point. Bill? Raised without much structure, young black men often reject education and gravitate towards the street culture, drugs, hustling, gangs. Pause. Yo, my man, and I was going to wait to the end to kind of, you know, shit all over his points, but let me just start here. I've talked about this so many times. You, you, we strangle, suffocate these neighborhoods, and we wonder why crime rises. Um, you take you arrest the black people at at what three to ten times the rate? I don't even know sure. what the number is. Right, it's, but but that's almost irrelevant. If you if you have schools, if you have like schools right. that are schools that are good that are funded if you have banks in neighborhoods if you have grocery stores in neighborhoods if you have jobs in neighborhoods if you have affordable housing in neighborhoods guess what what doesn't become a byproduct there's less and less crime why do why is it so desirable to live in the suburbs i mean this this Don Lemon, who's quick to claim that he lived in Philadelphia, quick to claim that he lived in Chicago, but he's from Louisiana. But he's like, oh, I know Philadelphia. You don't know Philadelphia. Oh, I know Chicago. Well, you don't know Chicago. Shut the hell up. Yeah. And what parts of Philadelphia and Chicago did you actually live in? Right. right? I mean, come on. You, you got to. And for Bill O'Reilly to be your your baseline. The freak out of here. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The <laughs> moment that he's like, listen to this, and it cuts to I mean, first off, can we just point out that every single clip that he has shown so far is from Fox News? Every single one. And there is no other person that he can come up with, no other channel that is spouting this nonsense. And it's yeah. like you want to talk about the structure and the lack of families, right? And that's where my point about like the arrest rates and stuff like that. Yeah, there's less structure because you're arresting all of these people. You're taking fathers out of homes, right? Like you're shooting and killing these people. And then you get mad because they don't see another option. There's no opportunities in those neighborhoods for these kids to do anything. So what do they see, right? They see the drug dealers or whatever it is in their neighborhoods who are able to provide for their families, albeit at you know whatever cost. And they say, all right, well, if I want to provide for my family, I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Like that's what they see ultimately as a role model. But we we as a society, we applaud and praise Al Capone. We, we 
applaud and praise Scarface. I mean, come on, let's, let, those guys are, although Scarface wasn't real, but Al Capone was real. Uh, Noriega was real. There's a lot of people when you look at like, how, how was it and why was it possible? Not only, sure, Al Capone threatened some people, but his community loved him because he gave his, he gave back to his community. Um, Fucking Pablo Escobar. Pa Pablo Escobar. The cops couldn't, nobody could move on dude because he built schools in his community. Right. Uh, he, he had a zoo for kids to come by. I mean, there was those things. Yeah. There were nefarious reasons, but some of it was probably to do good, but yes. they were giving love back to their community. And I'm not saying they're great people. I'm saying, no, it's not, it's not saying that the ends justify the means. The point is that, then the other people in that community see that figure. They see somebody who came from where they were and what they've been able to achieve and what they're doing that is positive, even if it's at, you know, the the cost of them having to do all of these horrible things to achieve it. And they they say, OK, well, if I want to do good things in my community, maybe that's what I need to do. There's an opportunity there, right? All right, let's roll it. Let's keep rolling. Nobody forces them to do that. Again, it is a personal decision. He is right about that, too. But in my estimation, he doesn't go far enough. Because <laughs> black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things that you should think about doing. Here's number five. Pull up your pants. Pause. Fuck you. As a person that wore size 42, size 44 pants, I wear my Timbos, my butt is all the time. I mean, when you're young, you do what young people do. It's no different than in the 50s and the 60s. People with their leather jackets, people with the slick back hair, people with afros, people with daishikis. And then as the, the Bible says, you know, when I was a child, I did childish things. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's a fashion trend. It is what happens in places. It's what, you know, he's not talking about the co-opted fashion by the suburb kids, predominantly white. All right, let's keep rolling. I mean, just like <laughs> I wore Jinko jeans in fucking high school, like, and in middle school, you know, like, and that shit was sagged. Right. Like, and you're right. How many 40 year old men do you see walking around with their asses hanging out like that? Not a lot. Not a lot. Walking around with your ass and your underwear showing is not okay. In fact, it comes from Probably prison. One, one check. But aren't you also the same guy that just get, has got a, a lawsuit where you're trying to sexually harass a, a, a guy in a bar grabbing his junk? Just want to make sure. I mean, you might, maybe you want the underwear to be a little bit more accessible. Just throwing that out there, Don. All right. When they take away belts, from the prisoner so that they can't make a weapon. And then it evolved into which role a prisoner okay. would have. Have you noticed that like half of the people in these videos aren't even black? Yeah, I have. I don't think <laughs> you. <laughs> what is that? Like, black people, stop wearing your pants like all these white people and all these Latinos <laughs> and all of these other not black people. Stop doing that. <laughs> okay, Don. <laughs> Oh, during male on male prison sex. The one with the really low pants is a submissive one. You get my point? Is this real? Yeah, it's real. It's this real. is the farthest I've ever gotten in this video. No, it's, it's, I am flabbergasted that this made it. I mean, I get that CNN was live, but like somebody approved these talking points going into it, obviously, well, because they had all this B-roll ready to go. Well, Don Lemon was here to save the, the black community. What a nice guy. Yeah. Number okay, four now is the N-word. By promoting the use of that word when it's not germane to the conversation, have you ever considered that you may just be perpetuating the stereotype the master intended, acting like a nigger? A lot of African Americans took offense to that too. And I wondered if I gave the right advice. I really did. But confirmation came the very next day on my way home when I exited the subway on 125th Street in Harlem. This little kid in a school uniform, no older than seven years old, he was crying his eyes out as he walked down the sidewalk with his mother. I'm gonna be honest here. She turned to him and she said, I'm sick of you, you act like an old ass man. Stop all that crying, nigger. Nigger, 
I bet you twenty. I bet you twenty dollars. She didn't say nigger. She said nigger. Well, not only that, but we're just taking a single anecdotal piece of evidence now to confirm what he believes to be true for an entire race of people. I I, I have. There are two camps within our culture about the word, and I get it. And I try to uh, abstain, but I'm always going to put, you know, a little bit of season on my food. I'm not <laughs> saying. You're like, I try to abstain. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> okay. Have you listened to the Chris and Andre show? <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I was just listening to uh, Charlemagne the God talk about, like, he's trying to, I mean, look. Yeah. Again, you it's, can change your opinion on this. Like you can you can sit there and do things and still say maybe that's maybe it's not the right thing to do, right? Maybe it's not the best way to approach it. But it, but it's not it's not as definitive as he's saying it is. No, like, it's not. And I'm not going to take Bill O'Reilly's or uh, Don Lemon's take on the word. That's okay, his, so that's his quick, personal opinion. Love the fact that he's like listen to this expert opinion and cuts to himself yeah really like <laughs> what what fucking just saying parody man. timeline are we fucking living in now i don't understand this no somebody this has to be a joke i can't even take this seriously <laughs> no, at this you point. have to he's a media personality and they know better than everybody else but, but like who cuts away to a video of themselves to confirm their own point? A narcissist. Listen to what I had to say on this. <laughs> About two years ago. About two years ago. <laughs> and then, you know what? I wondered if I was giving the right advice. But it turns out, based on one piece of anecdotal evidence, I was right. And then my dude says he went to Harlem to 125th Street. Like, okay, I know where the subway is in 125th. But, nigga, you in Harlem. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, what are you talking about? What What are you talking about? You're going to, and I don't know when this was recorded, but the last time I was in Harlem, there's a, it's becoming very gentrified and I'm sure. I was going to say. Like, and I'm sure he lives in a gentrified part of Harlem. And if he got off on 125th street, like, I don't know where he was going. Cause I'm sure he doesn't live where I think he lives. So anyway, continue. And I doubt he took a subway. I, I doubt he took the subway to, up to Harlem. But go ahead. I don't know if he would have made it all the way to Harlem. No, he, he would have made it. He would have made it. I just don't think that uh, that story is true. I agree. Is that taking the word back? Think about that. Now, number three, respect where you live. Start small by not dropping trash, littering in your own that, community. That, that is what we have to do as a, as a culture. Like and it's it's identified. That would fix everything. Did I, you know that? Yeah. If you stop littering, then everything gets better. And because white people don't litter ever. At least not in predominantly white neighborhoods, which is all that Don Lemon seems to be familiar with. <laughs> I just. <laughs> How do you purport to be the person giving advice to black people when it seems like all of your advice is do what white people do? Like, <laughs> really, Don? Are, really? Let's keep going because we'll be here for an hour. <laughs> I've lived in several predominantly white neighborhoods in my life. I rarely, if ever, witness people littering. I live in Harlem now. It's an historically black neighborhood. Yes, Every single day I see adults black. and children. Not anymore Not because anymore. they gentrified the fuck out of it. And that's when you felt comfortable enough to move in. Yeah. <sighs> Every single day I see adults and children dropping their trash on the ground when a garbage can is just feet away. Just being honest here. Number two, finish school. You want to break the cycle of poverty? Stop telling kids they're acting white because they go to school or they speak proper English. Over the course of a career, a college grad will make nearly a million dollars more than a high school graduate. That's a lot of money. And number one, and probably the most important, just because you can have a baby, it doesn't mean you should, especially without planning for one or getting married first. More than 72% of children in the African-American community are born out of wedlock. 
That means absent fathers. And the studies show that lack of a male role model is an express train right to prison. And the cycle continues. Okay. Just because they're born out of wedlock automatically means that the father is absent? No. So I, on that, I take personal offense on a lot of things he's saying, right? I was raised by a single mother. And yeah, there are statistics, but this is, those same statistics are... Actually, let me boil it down to this. Everything he mentioned is fixed solely and wholly by... Stop making it hard, harder for economically disadvantaged communities to advance or to have some of the same opportunities as others. The only thing that I would say outside of that, my mom decided to keep us in North Carolina as opposed to us going back to New York, where there's more opportunity, like flat out, there's more opportunity available, like just by us living here. I, I, when I had my family, I lived in places where I, cause I knew that my kids would have more opportunity. I've paid more in taxes because of those same things. And it doesn't, you know, his, his he's speaking from a, a, an uppity, like sellout frame of mind. <laughs> like if I'm being honest, um, I mean, it says right here, five ways to fix our, community yeah but he's he admits to spending a lot of time in predominantly white neighborhoods yeah but you know it's fair but now he lives in historically black harlem so obviously he knows what's really going on <laughs> and if you would just pull up your pants stop littering Graduate from that shitty school that is completely underfunded and the class sizes are way too big. Right. Oh, and only have kids when you're married and plan on doing so. Yeah. Despite the fact that you don't have as much access to everything birth control else. No, it's not even birth, birth control. Or any. Yeah, it, exactly. Anything else that surrounds that. Yeah, like now, I, these are all personal choices that each individual member of the black community is making on a daily basis, and that's why they're having such a hard time. Never mind the fact that the black community is not a monolith, right? That it is not just one size fits all. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm the white guy on this podcast speaking way too much right now. You are, but I swear but, to fucking God, but, Don Lemon, <laughs> like what? <laughs> Are you doing this? This the only thing I can honestly think is that CNN was like, we need to get some of them Fox News viewers over here. So let's have Don Lemon go on TV and rail against black people. I think, he, but you might be right. Uh, I know when I saw this video, I was pissed off. I was like, yeah. And I told my wife, I'm like, this, this is garbage. This guy is way off base. He's not talking about, I, you know, one issue, one issue. Let's stop making it hard for, you know, and we talked about this so many times. And yes, it's happening in Raleigh, where you strain. It happens in Durham. It happen. It's going to happen across this country as resources become more scarce, especially land. Mm -hmm. When you price out people or you pull resources and you strangle that community, what typically follows is chaos. And you can't just say, "Well, try harder." Try harder doing what, yo? Like, what do you What are you asking me to? Tr what do you right. with what? With what? What would What would you have me do? I, I talk about the abortion thing. Yeah, I think abortion. You know, I, I have my views about it. My own. The only thing I would say to anybody, as long as it doesn't become a, a form of like birth control, like four, right. or five, six, seven. That's weird. But I, I can almost guarantee you, most people that I know that have had abortions, it's a financial decision. Right. And I'm not saying that's every case. I, I don't know about rape or incest, but I, I firmly believe that should be like available because that's weird, right? That would be yeah. wrong to make somebody yeah. do that. But I, it, it should be available when you actually know that you're pregnant. Right. Not not at six weeks when most people have no idea. 
that they're pregnant. So his five things have nothing to do with the actual issue. And I'm sure he doesn't know what the actual issue is. And, and you stated it very clearly. I mean, he's lived in predominantly white neighborhoods. And that's fine. I'm not knocking him for success. I'm saying maybe he should sit down and shut up because he's not qualified to have the conversation. Right. So anyway, uh, Russell Simmons. Uh, <laughs> the beat rolls on. <laughs> man, he decided to reach out to Don. And keep him from jumping off the ledge and getting ostracized by the community. And uh, let's see how he responded to that. Russell, I'm glad you wrote the letter. Honestly, I really am. I'm so glad you wrote this letter so that I could have another segment on my TV show. <laughs> Good. Got to get them briefs and talk. <laughs> Initially, though, I wasn't even going to respond to your letter, not because I think you you know, completely missed the point. Not because like many of the other critics, I thought you were just using the occasion as a promotion for one of your Pause. businesses, your website. Pause. What a low blow. What a low blow. I thought you were just trying to get some exposure because nobody knows who Russell Simmons is. Yeah. You're just, you're going to use it to, you know, to, to hype up what, what, what has any sold yet. Maybe baby fat. Like that's not, that, that's, that's a clown answer, but continue. But I wasn't going to address it because, quite honestly, it was hard to take you and it seriously after you called me derogatory names like slave on Twitter. That accomplishes nothing, especially when lives are at stake. What did his segment accomplish? Oh, That's no. what I want to know. Like, does he think that he was saving lives by chastising black people as though they were all oh. one group and they all were suffering from the same issue. Oh, he's super enlightened because he, he's got a little bit of cheddar in his pocket and, and he lives in predominantly white neighborhoods. Yeah. 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 So he's, you know, all, all hail Don Lemon, but continue. <laughs> that said, I'm going to respond and I'm going to take the high road at the same time by not calling you names and simply addressing your point. Fuck you, Don. <laughs> to respond and i'm going to take the high road at the same time by not calling you names <laughs> yeah he's like low-key shitting on him he is and it's taking not the even high that road. low key though that's the whole thing he's like it's so fucking blatant what he is doing just like in the other video i don't understand he's a petty how this is a thing he's a petty clown man he's a clown <laughs> he's a clown oh all right before I start here, I've asked you on this program, on CNN, several times to discuss the very issues I've addressed. I've invited you again tonight, but again, you declined. That's fine. For but don't throw stones yeah. and hide your hand. Right. Russell yeah. Simmons, we are in a crisis right now. In the and words you, of John all Stewart, people need I'm to not understand be what I'm saying yeah. and understand what <laughs> you're doing. Because that's all it is. Yeah. All right. Here. Okay. <laughs> just to be clear. Just to be clear. Please insert John Stewart clip here. When you have people on for just knee jerk reactionary talk. Wait, I thought you were going to be funny. Come on. Be funny. No, no I'm not going to be your monkey. Um, <laughs> what? what? Yeah, please. Just so Chris doesn't get in trouble. No, but it's like, I'm not going to come on and be. And entertain your, you. Your, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to do the thing you want me to do so that you can get the ratings that you want. Like yeah. what does Russell Simmons benefit from coming on Don Lemon's show, right? I mean, I Russell gets, Russell's does, got his own problems, but he's not uh he, yeah. He's not a complete assassin of the culture. Don Lemon is an assassin of the culture. Russell Simmons, we are in a crisis right now and you of all people need to understand what I'm saying and understand what you're Pause. doing. You of all people, Negro, Russell was doing stuff before you even got your first paycheck. Who are you? Like, seriously, who who are you to say, you of all people, let me enlighten you? It's like the, the, the person that said, do I know something? Do you want me to educate? Educate me. Get the fuck out of here. Like, when you put your when you put yourself up like that, you are bound to get knocked down. So, uh, put your dick on the table; you're, it's likely to get chopped off. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like put it back, man, reel it back in, because nobody you can't play with everybody like that. And I'm and I'm I'm sorry I'm late to the game, but Don Lemon's a clown, like he's a straight up clown, and he's he's offensive. It's offensive to see him on television as a black person. 
so CNN finds somebody else because he's not the one. But let's let's continue. And then I just let him give a couple more words, and then let's see how he, uh, he talks about his New Year's resolution. <laughs> because of what you do and who you are, you have much more influence on young people of all races than I do. So first, you say I sound like conservative hosts are pulling strings, writing, you write this, conservatives love when we blame ourselves for the conditions that have destroyed the fabric of the black community. My response is, you should take that up with a conservative or a liberal or someone who is concerned about political affiliation in this particular situation. That does not save lives. The only viewpoints you shared in your clips were of conservative people. Next. Like, no, that's all you got to say. It shouldn't matter if someone is black, white, brown, purple, green, Democrat, or Republican. Because you know if all those purple and green people out there. saving lives. Purple and green lives no matter, matter their intentions yeah. or background, we should listen. I mean, that's a fucking talking point. The fucking name of the show is No Talking Points. And all he does is talk talking points. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I don't understand. It should be no colon talking points. <laughs> oh. What the hell? What are we doing? <laughs> Attack the problem, not the message. <laughs> you also write... I can't accept that you would single out black teenagers as the cause of their own demise because they don't speak the king's English or wear belts around All their right, waistband. All right, pause. <laughs> Nigga, you didn't attack the problem, and you used the, the lie as the message. Right. Martin Luther King, uh, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, they all talked about the economic disadvantage that black folk in this country had for years. If you look and read Don Lemon, because you are so versed in everything, God bless you. And as because I saw you do the little uh, shuck and jive thing about uh, Black History Month, you've at, you've spoken with Martin Luther King Jr. son several times. You've never once asked him about his father's, or I don't, I don't think maybe I'm wrong. His the path his father was trying to say is let's make us economically whole. But you, in your segment, the original one, took the lie and made that the message. So please sit down and shut up because you're not qualified. Right. Russell, Afros came out of the struggle, the African-American civil rights clown. movement, and are a symbol of the appreciation of black beauty and the black aesthetic. The daishiki is a traditional form of West African dress which symbolizes African pride. Sagan... By the way, Russell, the hip hop community of which you helped establish, drop the G on the word so that spelled backwards, the word reads N-I-G-G-A-S. Okay, I'm done with this. Okay, conspiracy boy. <sighs> that is like, that's some QAnon level, like, you know, Donald Trump said on the third day, second Tuesday of the week doing 22 i don't give a fuck man sh you're i don't want to no i think like he actually makes a really good point there um obviously <laughs> that was done in tension i can't even get through it <laughs> what the fuck you dropped the g so that it spells this other thing backwards <laughs> like Okay, so really done, R really. So the We're one thing that makes that me now. feel better is that now we I have the baseline of how much I should respect his opinion. Let's roll that last clip because this is the guy that we're supposed to take seriously. This is the guy that is uh, he's so enlightened about our culture. On social media to tell us what your resolutions are, yes. what your wish is for 2022. You know what my, no, what my resolution is? Yes. For 2022? Yes. No more broke dick, okay? No more what? No more broke dick. No more penis from a man that has no money. Did you say broke dick? Yeah. Oh. But it's always good. That's the problem. Wow. Can I say that on TV? Is that okay? I ain't saying she's a bro. Listen, all I'm saying, I saying is she's a gold if team. anyone <laughs> who is acquiring male genitalia. Oh, but you don't, you don't like hip hop. 
Right, he doesn't like hip hop and he doesn't like the N word. But I'm gonna reference a hip hop song that uses and say everything except for the N word. <laughs> and all I gotta say is mic drop. Hey, um, Don Lemon, CNN, uh, you played yourself, man. Like you literally, like this guy's a clown. Uh, and I'm not even taking sides on anything. I'm just saying Don Lemon's a clown. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode. In case you ignored my previous instructions, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to tickle that little like button. And if you have something to say, you can drop it in the comment down below. We'll see you on the next one.